We only have one week left. There's only one week left. And then NaNoWriMo is done. Until Camp NaNo, if you do those. But yeah, for now, we only have a week left. And I don't know where you are in your project. I don't know where I am in my project. But I know that if we buckle down, we can get to it. So for the last time this month, let's do a nano pep talk on today's Project Shadow. Hello everyone, how are you doing today? My name is Charlie, you might know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset, especially if you're reading my latest book, Crucify My Love, and today we are going to be revving ourselves up for the last week of NaNoWriMo. Yes, we're going to be going in on the last week of National Novel Writing Month, and I am definitely going to be doing a pep talk because I need it. And this is kind of a dual purpose pep talk, and I'm going to be quite honest with you, I am recording this on Halloween and scheduling it for the date that it comes out. And as I sit here the day before Nano begins, I am in a terrible panic. So I'm going to take all of those feelings and I'm going to express them in a way that will get me excited to get started writing and hopefully will be good to keep us writing when we get here. Okay? Yeah. All right. So let's do this. But you know, this was coming before we get into it. If you haven't already, do take a moment to rate this podcast in whatever app you're listening to me on. It really does help out a lot. It tells the algorithm to share the podcast with more people. The more people that listen, the bigger the community, the bigger the community, the better the chance we have of actually communicating with each other. And after all, that's why I do this in the first place. And thank you to everybody who's already done that. So, you want to write a novel in 30 days. You at least want to get 50,000 words done in 30 days. That may not be your entire novel, but it's at least a really good chunk of it. And so, you have committed to doing NaNoWriMo. And here we are in the last week, the final week. It's about to come to an end. We have faced the demons of doubt. We have faced the demons of just sheer fear, panic, anger. I know I usually get mad at at least one character by this point who's not behaving exactly the way that I want it to. Major plot points have shifted in a way that we didn't foresee, and now we have to figure out how we're going to get where we need to go. There's so much panic. But, and this is the important part of this whole thing, and I know you know what I'm going to say now, because this is what I've been saying in all my pep talks. We can do it. And I say that because we've made it this far. You seriously made it this far. There, you, there's, there's one week left. If you have made it this far and you haven't completely panicked yourself out of NaNoWriMo, you are a champion. You are a beast. And if you can get this far, without completely losing track of everything that you wanted to do, without completely giving up in a state of cold sweat flop panic, which trust me, I know what that feels like. I've had many of those over the years. Then you are a champion. You are a beast and you will be able to make your daily total. Now, I highly recommend if you're writing in Scrivener, if you haven't already, to make sure that you have it calculating your daily writing goals really does help out a lot. You set your total for 50,000 words, you set your date for November 30th, and it will calculate your draft and tell you how much you need to write each day. I do that and follow that number and try to beat it every day. And whether that number looks insurmountably large or manageably doable, which, let's be honest, for most of us, and me included, it probably looks insurmountably large by now. 
By this point in the month, I'm usually needing to average around 3,600 words a day just to hit my target, just to hit the 50,000 words. Hopefully this year I did better. We'll find out on Friday, won't we? When You may have found out last Friday. But whatever that target is, it's time to double down. It's time to recommit because that's what we're doing here every Monday. We are recommitting to this desire that we have to challenge ourselves, to stretch ourselves, to work our imagination harder than we normally do to run this marathon, to get the 50,000 words out. And that is the goal. That is the challenge. So whether you hit the 50,000 words or not, remember, we talked about this in last week's pep talk, whether you hit the 50,000 words or not, just working towards them, just doing the stretch, just managing to get past your fear of not being able to get anything done, that is victory. Just starting to draft a story is one of the hardest things you will ever do in the writing process. So taking the time to not only get started, but to make a commitment to yourself to write these 50,000 words, that's huge. And you have to remind yourself of that. Because at a certain point, we all think it's crazy. I know I'm probably freaking out right now. Hell, I'm about to get started writing as I'm recording this, and I'm freaking out because while I know that I can do this and have done this in years past, I know what it's going to take for me to get there. And it doesn't help that the people in my life are not 100% supportive. Every time I talk to my mother, she tells me that I'm not going to make it because November is a crazy month. And yes, November is always a crazy month because we have my birthday, we have Thanksgiving, so that's two days I'm going to have to take off whether I want to or not. We have the weekly Earthon games, which I have committed to run, so that's four more days that I'm going to have to take off whether I want to or not. And maybe I can get some writing done before the games. Maybe I can get some writing done before we head out for any of those celebrations. But more than likely, this week, this month, is going to be crazy. And this final week is going to be the craziest. Because everything in us has been spent. Everything in us has been used up just to get to this point. And we feel like we don't have anything left to give. We feel like we don't have anything left to offer. Everything's been done. Everything's been written. But our word count is not where we want it to be. And so we struggle to find hope. We struggle to find strength. And let me tell you, you don't have to struggle. This may sound counterintuitive, but writing, good writing, happens in the state of relaxation and openness. And that's what you need to be finding right now. You need to be sitting back, taking those deep breaths, opening yourself up, putting yourself in the minds of the characters. If you made playlists for the book or for the characters, use them. If you've picked movies to have on in the background as you write to inspire you, play them. Whatever it is, whatever techniques you have set up in your prep, to get you through this process now more than any time in the month is the time to pull out all of those tricks to get yourself through. This is the point in the month where I remind myself that I got myself a treat that I'm only allowed to open if I hit the 50,000 words and remind yourself of that treat that you have that reward sitting there, that reward waiting for you. You're going to get out. You're not only going to have the reward, the reward of finishing the 50,000 words, but you're going to have that treat because I work off of rewards. Rewards are a very good thing to motivate me. And so I always have one. I actually have a special wooden chest that I put it in because I usually get myself a nice bottle of wine because that makes me happy and I don't let myself drink during nano. So. It's sitting there, just waiting for me to get there and open it. 
But more than anything, at this stage of the game, we don't need to be hyping ourselves up. We need to be chilling ourselves out. We need to be relaxing. We need to be finding that quiet place, that place of restoration, that place where we walk into the restorative waters of our own creativity. Whatever that is, is that comics, is that music, is that movies, whatever it is that restores you and brings you back to that place that makes you want to create. Go there, find it, just wade into those waters and let them wash over you and focus you for the task at hand. Let them focus you for the work that's in front of you. Because the hardest part is staying calm. The hardest part is not letting yourself get all frazzled because of the deadline. The deadline will come and go no matter what you do. You have to be calm. Just breathe. Just breathe. You can get through this. And together, we will get to the end and make it. So now I want to speak to that fear, that fear that wells up inside of all of us that says, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to hit my target. I'm not going to hit my goal. And I just want to say to you, so what? This is the most important thing that you need to realize. You're not going to lose anything by not winning. All you have to do is work as hard as you can to hit your target. All you have to do is focus and keep yourself focused. That's what you're learning. That's what you're practicing this month is keeping yourself focused, keeping yourself on target. The more disciplined you get, the more you learn how to focus yourself on writing, the more of a victory you'll have, whether you hit the 50,000 words or not. And that's really important for us to realize in this entire process. Yes, it's exciting to hit the 50K. It's really exciting to be able to announce that you won NaNoWriMo. That, that, that is a wonderful feeling, and it's a feeling that I'm chasing, and I know everyone here is chasing. But you have to keep in mind that nothing will be lost if you don't hit the 50K. Because it's that fear of not finishing that will work against us stronger and more powerfully than anything else. And it's that fear of not finishing, of not hitting the goal, that will keep us from hitting the goal. So you need to abolish that fear. Remember, you have more time to write the book. So if you don't get the book finished, then you just keep writing after NaNoWriMo. If you don't hit your 50,000 words, you just keep writing after NaNoWriMo. There is no permanent loss for not making the to title, the total. And I really think that that's important. And that may sound defeatist. And I know when I say this, some people think that I'm being defeatist. But I'm trying to get you to understand the actual stakes here. There are, there are bragging rights for succeeding. And honestly, any words written in a story is a victory. So from my point of view, from my perspective, there are bragging rights even in missing the 50K. I've had years. I remember one year I was working on a story and I only got to like 49,000 49, words. I didn't hit the 50 and I just couldn't push myself over that line. My brain was done. No words would come. I couldn't even like talk and hold conversations with people. I had used up all my words. But that was early in the process. That was early in my years of doing it. And the discipline that I learned, the ways of me measuring and modulating my own energy levels were invaluable in the years to come. Not just for NaNoWriMo, but for other projects. Because I learned exactly how hard I could push myself and when I could push myself that hard. Never forget NaNoWriMo is a marathon. The whole point of it is to demonstrate to ourselves that we have discipline. And if we don't have discipline going in, to develop that discipline through the process itself. To work our hardest, to work our best, to make the story as good as it can be in the draft. To make ourselves 
the most efficient writers that we can be to get the draft done. That's what we're doing this month. We're stretching those muscles. We're honing our access to our imagination. And we're connecting those pathways between our creativity and our ability to type words. And that is where the magic actually happens because that is some of the hardest things to learn as a writer is when you actually have an idea that's worth writing and how to actually have develop the discipline and the energy to get through the long process of drafting so that you actually finish the project you're working on. That's what NaNoWriMo is all about. Learning self-control, learning discipline, learning what our limits are. Some people, the fortunate ones, learn that writing 1,668 words a day is easy for them. And they continue to do it and they pump out a crazy amount of fiction. More power to them. That's great. Other people learn that that's hard and that's a challenge. And they need to develop those muscles. They need to develop that connection between their creativity and their ability to actually capture words. Because our ability to capture words doesn't actually connect to our creativity naturally. That's something that we have to learn. That's a process that we have to develop within ourselves to make those connections happen, to be able to catch those fleeting ideas as they flow through our heads in ways that are translatable into an eventual final product, into a final piece of fiction. And until we learn how to do that, we're going to struggle in our writing. So wherever you are in your project, wherever you are in your process, remember learning that process, which is individual for each writer. No two of us write exactly the same. We all have to learn our own tricks. We have to learn our own routine. We have to learn our own process. Wherever you are, the learning you're doing this month is immeasurably valuable. It will help you throughout your career to continue honing your craft and getting words out. So all of those fears of, what if I don't finish? What if I don't finish? Which will happen no matter how much you tell yourself that they shouldn't, you know they don't matter. They are just there to spook you and to keep you from finishing. Because if there's one thing I know about the writer's mind, it's that we are gifted when it comes to self-sabotage. We will find ways to talk ourselves out of victory anytime we can. And more than anything, and I know I've said that so many times in this podcast, but Really, more than anything, learning to overcome those internal self-doubts, to put them into perspective and to realize exactly what they are and what they're telling you, what they're actually showing you about your process and about your ability to actually make it where you want to go and to get your words out. Ignore them. Ignore the fears. Ignore the naysayers. Ignore the little voices inside your head that are telling you you're not going to make it because they only exist to keep you from getting there. This is a learning process. Every writing project is a learning process. We are honing the craft, we are developing our skills, and we are connecting even stronger to that well of creativity that exists within us every time we start a new process. And no two books are the same, and the process for writing two books will not be the same. So just because you had it easy last year and you're struggling this year, or vice versa, doesn't mean anything. What you need to learn most as a writer is when and how to let go. Because in letting go and letting be, we find our voice We find our stories, we connect to our creativity, and in that, we find a way to birth our stories into the world 
in the best form that we can, knowing that they will never be perfect because perfection is in the hands of the gods and we mere mortals must cope with what we can actually accomplish. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you did and you haven't already, please do take a moment to rate it in whatever app you're listening to me on. It does help out a lot. I hope you are getting all the words written. I hope you're having fun. I hope you're getting where you need to be. I have a group of cats running around me making all kinds of noise. So hopefully that didn't record into the podcast today because oh, I've got two kittens and a big cat and they're learning to play with each other. And oh, it's a thing. If you would like to join the project and support all the work that I'm doing from the podcast to the writing to the world building in the show notes, you'll find a link to both the community support and my Patreon. Anything you can do there, anything you can give really does help support everything that I'm doing and helps me continue my work. If you don't have any money right now or you don't feel like giving, that's fine. But if you know somebody that you think would like this podcast, do share it with them. That helps out immensely as well. I want to thank you so much for listening. It does brighten my day every day when I look at my analytics and see that people actually did listen to the podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or topics you'd like to hear discussed on the show, and if you would like your last week of NaNoWriMo to be featured in our final um, wrap-up show, which will be coming this Friday, in the show, show notes you'll find a link to the voice message system. Keep it short, keep it clean so I can use it on the show. I would love to hear from you. If you'd rather hit me up on social media, I am C.E. Dorset. that's Dorset with T- two T's, on both Instagram and Twitter. You can find links to everything that I do over at projectshadow.com. And again, I hope you're getting all the words written, and I hope you're having fun with NaNoWriMo. And until next time, and I know you think I'm just being silly when I say this at the end of every episode, but I mean it. Don't forget to have the fun. Bye.